welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. Hi right, guys. Hope you all had a great holiday yesterday. We just had a great day in general. But as you guys know, as some of you might know, I had a, a terrible accident in the fish room. been a bad two days in the fish room I had a electrical short with one of my heaters and my 65 gallon tank which I just got a couple last month and it did terrible damage to the fish in that in that tank now I'm gonna show you guys how to avoid that problem try to avoid that problem keep it from happening to you so you don't lose your fish but I'm gonna turn the lemons into lemonade. I'm gonna uh, show you the, the bright spot and what happened and what I did afterward. So let's take a look. So here's the bright spot, guys. We got a lone survivor. Here he is. It's the only one out of the eight spotted puppers in that tank that managed to survive. I don't know how he did it. I'm gonna call him Rocky from now on because he's a survivor. Some of you will get that, don't worry. But he seems to be okay. I don't know, <laughs> maybe he has superpowers now. But I'm gonna uh, probably go to PetSmart today and get him his own little five gallon tank to uh, uh, recuperate in. Because uh, if you go through that, if, if everybody around you gets electrocuted and you manage to survive, then you, you deserve to uh, be taken care of after that. That's what I think. So, I don't know. I'm just glad I got one of them left. I was going to grow these guys out. I was going to give them out to you guys, uh, friends of mine. But at least he survived. God bless him. He's definitely a warrior. And then my recommendation to you is to go out and get yourself a couple of these little boxes to quarantine the fish in when something goes wrong. You never know how, how many times these things have saved the fish for me. They're cheap. They just float in the tank and you can separate your fish without have to worry about changing the water parameters or anything like that. Go get yourself a couple of these. Now, let's get to what I did after the tragedy. So, what did I do after this happened? Well, first thing I did was a 50% water change. Second thing I did was test my water, make sure everything's okay. It was just the electrical problem. So, I went out to my local fish store, Fish Bowl in Stanford, Connecticut. Go check them out. And they had a bunch of uh, uh, locally bred by someone in my town. He bred a whole bunch of African cichlids. So, I said, what the heck? I want to do something different. So I got about 12 of them. Yeah, yeah, 12 of them. And dropped them right in the tank. Here they are, swimming around. I'll probably grow them out, give these out. That's what I like to do. I like to grow them out and then give them out to other people. Look at them. Look at them, they kind of all school together at this age, which, which I gotta admit is pretty cool. I miss my puffers, but I couldn't go back to the puffers again. It's too soon. So, let's see how these guys work. They seem to be enjoying everything. They ate like maniacs last night. But now, let's get to the point of this video. I wanna tell you guys how to avoid what just happened to me. How to not electrocute your fish. I mean, they couldn't have done nothing that bad if you wanna electrocute them. And also, be careful. Because I found out you can electrocute yourself. You can electrocute yourself. There was a guy in Australia. He got electrocuted by his pond. He let the extension cord go into the pond. He was 67 years old. And it electrocuted him. He was dead when the police found him. Now, that's basically what's happening to us when we have a stray voltage leak in our aquariums. So let me tell you how to avoid it. 
All right, so what are we dealing with here? Stray current. The stray current is when your aquarium has an errant electrical charge running through the water. It's not only dangerous for you, but it can harm your fish, your corals, your vertebrae. Now, what usually happens is, anywhere you have something submersible, a pump, a protein skimmer, circulation pump, uh, heaters, anything where the, where the power cord goes into the actual tank, and now that's where you can find stray voltage. Now, what I'm going to tell you to do is, is go out and get yourself a voltage tester. That's the first thing I would do. And every time you do a water change, which I'm going to do from now on religiously, is every time you do a water change, you want to test for stray voltage. Now, what you do for that, I mean, you could put your hand in the tank, and you could feel a zap, or you, you could get electrocuted. But what I do is I'll go get my multimeter, and they're about 20 bucks at a Home Depot or something like that, and set the meter to 120 voltage AC. Uh, you place the black tip um, into the grounding hole of an electrical outlet. Yeah, I know. And, and then you're going to insert the the red tip of the probe into the aquarium water. Now, you're going to watch the meter. And if it says anything above zero, you have straight voltage in your water. Now, what you want to do now is, is once you find out if you do have a reading over zero... You're going to start uh, unplugging everything in your aquarium one by one and keep testing it with the bolt meter until you find the culprit, until you find where it's coming from. Then you just replace that part or you replace whatever it is because uh, it's electrocuting your fish. They do make uh, temperature controllers where it'll turn off your heater if it gets uh, above a certain temperature. But that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with uh, a stray voltage. So that'll be a video for another time. As some of my other recommendations to help solve this problem or to avoid this problem is you definitely want to get uh, power strips. You want to plug things into power strips with a uh, secondary ground fault protector where they'll pop if anything arcs off. Well, they're supposed to pop if anything arcs off. And then if you can, um, you go to Home Depot, either do it yourself or have an electrician do it. Have them put in the ground fault outlets. Same ones you got in your kitchen, same ones you got in your bathroom. Uh, those will pop if anything goes wrong. So you, instead of electrocuting your fish, the power allegedly should turn itself off. What else you can do is, uh, it's not a real fix, but it'll help, is get yourself a grounding probe. It, um, it basically just grounds the water or whatever stray electricity uh, down to uh, an outlet. So it, it gives the electricity a place to go instead of uh, killing your fish. But the problem with this is, this is more a, a safety measure because it doesn't solve the problem. If you need a grounding probe and you're grounding electricity, it means you still have electricity in your aquarium. So you wanna find the problem. But if you hook these up, and they're not very expensive, they're about $12 each. If you hook these up, they do, they do at least give the electricity a place to go so it doesn't overwhelm and kill your fish. So think about getting some of these too. Another important thing is make sure you're not overtaxing your breakers. Make sure your breaker panel is set up. I put in an extra two 25-man breakers just, for, just to run my fish room. Like if you see the lights dim and then pop on, you probably have a little bit too much power on that circuit. So just to, to avoid some problems, make sure your breakers are up to up to standard. You know, a lot of old houses, they have um, it just, just 15 amps, uh, old wiring. Uh, you're going to want to look into that to also avoid problems. So the main thing I'm trying to say here, the, the main message for this is, is get yourself a volt tester. They're, they're cheap. Just go to Home, Home Depot anywhere. And no, I'm not sponsored by Home Depot. But just go get a voltage tester, and every time you do a water change, just test the voltage in your tank. I mean, because you can lose some fish like I did. And I lost a... I'm very unhappy about that. But I figured if we can all learn from it, we can do something, then it, it's not that bad. But get yourself a voltage tester. If you can change your outlets, make sure you have power strips with the default protector in it. Just do all these things. Because you don't want to get electrocuted. You don't want your fish to get electrocuted. You don't want your kids to get electrocuted. I mean, nobody wants to get electrocuted. Well, I hope after all that happened, I gave you guys some useful information. Something easy you can do. Check on the safety of your tanks. Thank you guys for watching.
Thank you guys for supporting, and I'll see you next time on Benny's Aquatics.